Okay, so we get this question a lot. Uh, do we add 2 pi k? Or sometimes we end up adding pi k. Um, and then there's no reason we could just do those. You could add like pi halves. It's basically when your answers are evenly spaced apart. And in high school trig, it most commonly happens when you start off with a squared in your equation or when you have a tangent going on. So let me show you um, what's going on. So we'll do a normal one first. Uh, we want to know when the sine of x is root 3 over 2. We look at our unit circle, and our unit circle says, ah, oh, you get that at pi thirds. And then there's another angle where the sine is um, positive, and that's in quadrant 2. And that'll be uh, 2 pi thirds. And then, of course, we can have coterminal angles. I can keep adding full revolutions and getting back to my original angle. So I could keep adding a full 2 pi revolution k times, where k is an integer. It's I could, I could add it once. I could add it twice. I could add it three times, uh, etc. I could add it no times. I could go backwards a circle, right? So any integer is what k is representing. So it's just and then I could do the same thing for my 2 pi thirds. I could just keep adding full circles and generating coterminal angles. So notice my angles are not evenly spaced apart. I add a little, I add a lot, I add a little, I add a lot to get to pi thirds and 2 pi thirds. So this is as good as that one is going to get. When we move on to the next one, this guy here, when we square root both sides, we get sine of x is either plus or minus root 3 over 2. So it's the same problem that we had there, except now we're not just getting where sine is positive, but we're also getting where sine is negative. So we get all four pi thirds angles. And we could, it would not be technically wrong to say, okay, I'll take my pi thirds and I'll add 2 pi a bunch of times to that to make sure I get all my coterminal angles. I'll take my 2 pi thirds and add 2 pi as many times as I want to that. Take my 4 pi thirds and add 2 pi as many times as I want to that. And take my 5 pi thirds and add 2 pi as many times as I want to that. So this is not wrong not wrong. We did get them all, but we can do better. We can be more concise. We can condense this. So notice that these guys here, these guys here are 180 apart, right? So instead of adding a full 2 pi a bunch of times, and then also adding a full 2 pi a bunch of times to that one, why don't we just start at pi thirds and add pi, add pi once, add pi twice, add pi three times, add pi four times. So this guy and the four pi thirds, they condense to just pi thirds plus pi k. And so now I've taken care of both of those to get my other angles, the two pi thirds and the five pi thirds, I can take my 2 pi thirds, that's awfully thick, uh, I can take my 2 pi thirds and add pi k to those, and that'll get this one, and then I'll add pi, I get the 5 pi thirds, and then I keep adding pi. So these two condensed to those. So basically you just have to give one just have to give this one and that one and add pi k. So that's one case where they end up being nice and evenly spaced apart. They end up being pi apart. Uh, the other time it happens is with uh, tangents. So tangent, if we come over to look at this guy here, um, angles that give me a tangent of root 3, oh, it's my pi thirds again, sorry, 
but there's another one, tangent's also positive, in the fourth quadrant. So um, 4 pi thirds and 4 pi thirds. And notice these are pi apart. Perhaps I should have started with these because these are just more common. So I could take, so again, I could take the pi thirds and add 2 pi k a bunch and take the 4 pi thirds and add 2 pi k a bunch. It's not wrong. I got them all, but it looks nicer if I just start at pi thirds and add pi because it's nice and evenly spaced. Add pi, add pi, add pi, add pi. So take the pi thirds, add pi as many times as you like. So that's when it comes up most often, when it's squared and when it's tangent. The other case I do see is um, this one here. This one's kind of fun. If I square root both sides, I get plus or minus root 2 over 2. So now I'm getting all my pi force angles. Not only am I getting the where it's positive at pi force and at a 5 pi force, I'm getting where cosine is negative at 3 pi fours and at, um, oops, this is 7 pi fours, my bad. 5 pi fours there. Now, I could do my pi trick because these are pi apart and these are pi apart, but even better, um, they're all, these are all right angles. They're all pi halves apart, right? because uh, pi force is 45 degrees if you'd rather. So 45, 45, those are all 90s. So I could just take one of these, add pi, start at pi force, and then just keep adding pi halves, keep adding 90 degrees as many times as I want. So it doesn't have to just be 2 pi k versus pi k. It's they could just be evenly spaced no matter what. So it's always worth it to make a little uh, uh, sketch and see where they are, right? So, you know, maybe you had an answer where you had all the pi six angles and all the pi thirds angles, and you could just add pi six as many times as you want. So you just want to be as concise as possible because who wants to say all this when you can just say that, right? So there you go.